One of the great security features of OpenSense is the fact that it supports multi-factor authentication for the web interface directly out of the box. And in this video, I'm going to walk through and show you exactly how to set it up from start to finish. Now, there are a couple of caveats that you need to consider because when you enable uh, TOTP for the web interface, it will also affect the console. So you need to make sure you don't lock yourself out of the console as well. And I'm going to walk through and show you exactly how to do that right now. Log in. Um, okay, so before we can enable uh, one time passwords, we basically need to set the server up. So, in order to do that, I'm going to system, access, and servers. And you'll notice that we only have local database. So, what we need to do is to add a new server for the TOTP authentication. So, we're going to go add, um, give it a name, so TOTP type we need to set this to local time based one time password the token length if i recall correctly um, if you're using google authenticator it only supports um, six characters now you can use eight if you're using a different type of authenticator um, i'm going to do this demo with google so we're going to leave it at six um, the other option you might be interested in is the reverse reverse token order um, typically TOTP works on any system where you log in, put your username in, your password in, and then you're prompted for the TOTP password, um, or the code from your authenticator. Now on OpenSense, it doesn't work that way. How it does work is when you put your username in, the code and your password are combined. So you'll put your six digit code in and then you'll put your password in. If this box is ticked, you'll put your password in and then you'll put your six digit code in. All right, whichever you've got it set to. And it does tell you that under the help. We're just going to leave this as default and click save. With that, let's uh, go and create the user. So for security reasons, I normally don't use the root user. I usually disable it. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll create a new user. So add username, yt user, password, password will do for now. Um, name, YouTube, demo, don't need email or comment or any of this stuff. Now, the login shell. This is important if you're creating a replacement user for root. If it's set to no login and you try and log in through the console, it won't let you in. So you need to actually set an active shell. So we'll set this to um, CSH. Leave the expiration date. Admins want to be a member of. Um, I'm going to leave the certificate for the user. Uh, I'll cover that in something else. The one-time seed, we need to generate that. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit save. Now with that, we have our one-time password seed generated. So we can copy that and paste it into our app. Or we can click unhide and then scan this QR code with the app. Just while we're um, in the user section, it's generally a good idea to paste a your public SSH key in here so that you can SSH into the system without any password requirements. Um, we're just going to leave that, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and scan this with the app. So if I go into the app, oh, delete that, that's the previous one. Trash that, remove account. So I'm going to add a new account. I'm going to scan a QR code. And I want that. So now we've got the account added. We can go ahead and do that. So that works. Once we've uh, done that, the next stage, obviously, we need to make sure that the uh, OTP code actually works. So we're going to go into servers. Sorry, tester. And we're going to test the TOTP. Um, now... If you do local database and I put YT user and then I stick a password a password in, that will obviously pass, but we're not going to be using the local database. We're going to change it to our TOTP server. And now if I try that, it fails because we need the TOTP code. So in order to do this, 
we're going to do 409930 forward by password. Hit test. And now that's successful. And that's really important because we really don't want to lock ourselves out at this stage. Okay, with that set, um, let me just change it back to this. Uh, with that set, we can now set our system to authenticate against the TLTP database. So in order to do that, we're going to Settings, Administration, um, look for Authentication, and it's set to Local Database. So what we're going to do is change that to TLTP and disable the Local Database. Um, now with that, we can click Save. And if we log out, and then try and log back in, if I try and log back in as the uh, root user, it's not going to let me in because there's no TLTP set up for it. So, fails. So we need to log in as our YouTube user, and again, we need to put our one-time password in, and just let that one time out. So six zero six five three two and log in. Sorry, followed by password. And log in. We're now back in the system. Something to keep in mind when you're doing this is the console access. Uh, obviously you don't want to lock yourself out. Um so if we go to console um behind that. So if we go to the console, uh, and now we try and log in, uh, if we try and log in as YT user with our password, it's not going to work. So yeah, we need to uh, go ahead and enter our authentication code, which we're going to do with um, YT user followed by 834. 853 password and now we're in um, the problem you may have at this stage is that um, if we try and access anything we're not going to be able to even sticking the password in uh, 1 2 6 5 5 password so YT users is not in the pseudos file. So that could be an issue. Um, so to fix that, we're going to make a couple of changes. Uh, under system administration again, um, what we're going to want to do is enable a secure shell, which allows to SSH in the system if you want. You'll need to do that if you're actually going to SSH into it as opposed to access the console. Um, Login group, wheel and admins, that's fine. So both wheel and admins can log in. Uh, root login, if you can leave that disabled. If you're not using the root password, if you are, if you're not using the root user, sorry, uh, you can leave it disabled. If you are using it, obviously tick it. Authentication method, I generally don't suggest that you use passwords. Use um, SSH keys, which was a field that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm not going to go into this right now, but let's say if there is a need, leave a comment below and you know I might consider looking at it so obviously you've got your SSH port um, now back down here under offense oh sorry password protect the console menu uh, if you trust the device and no one's gonna jump on the console from the device itself you can obviously untick that as another measure not to lock you out I generally tend to leave it protected anyway um, so this was a section that we're looking at sudo so sudo is disallowed and if we the options we have is ask for password. Um, if you set it to ask for password, again, it's going to take into the into consideration the one-time password. So you'd put your code in and then the password, or you can do no password. So if I set it to no password, and then I click save. Now if we go back to the console, uh, and I do sudo ls, 
we now have um, root access to the system. But what if you want the menu that appears when you log in as root? Well, if we, let me just switch this back again. If you go under access, users, root, and just look at the root user, we can see the shell is set to open sense shell. So you can refer to that if you ever forget. So we can do sudo open sense shell. And now we've got the menu up as we'd expect. If we get off that, um, you can always do sudo su, and that'll do the same thing. So there's a couple of ways of getting back to the menu. Um, I just wanted you to keep um, in mind that activating TOTP will also affect the console settings. So you really need to make sure you don't lock yourself out at this stage. If you do lock yourself out, unfortunately, the uh, only recourse is going to be to completely wipe the system and reinstall OpenSense and start all over again. I hope that you found this video useful if you were looking to enable multi-factor authentication for the web interface of OpenSense. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to allow other people to find the same video. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel and hit the notifications icon to receive notifications of any new videos that are released. If you'd like to hire us for any commercial projects, feel free, head across to our website and click on that Hire Us button.